Hello, it's Dr. Evans again. And Robert McSackman. Today we're going to talk about plagiarism and how to avoid it. It could be that you didn't mean to, but your code had ill intentions in your heart. The video is to fix the what the wrong and to help the sinners among you to find Jesus. Well put, Robert. Unintentional plagiarism is by and large the most common, and that is one of the mo uh, where we'll spend the most of our time on. As a writer, we need to uh, use some solid support to help defend a thesis. But by using uh, the knowledge of uh, others, we can strengthen our foundation of, of any argument. However, part of acknowledgement is recognizing the author and the source and building upon your sources thoughts with your own. A paper should have your voice in it, not just your sources. It shouldn't have sound look a bird squawking the point back at you. Your teach wants your thoughts, now they are the egg hides. Another reason to cite some bit of knowledge is to give the information some clout. Talking about war conditions sounds more trustworthy and authoritative and authentic when it's backed up by firsthand experience by, say, a soldier who was maybe there on the front lines. Scientific statements do gain a bit of credibility when supported by papers written by researchers who've maybe spent decades in study, studying these issues. While this can sometimes turn into the fallacy, the appeal to authority, which we'll talk about maybe a little bit later when we, when we get into logic and fallacies and arguments, if the authority is believed only for the, say, the sole reason that he is in self-authority. But given the, the fact that if you have two separate sources and one is authority and one is a non-authority, the authority should be given more credence. So I shouldn't have cited my Uncle Duncan about the nuclear power? Probably not. For he's a particle physicist. That's a different story. Stop trying to trick me here, Robert. So let's talk about what is considered plagiarism. Dr. Evans, uh, do you have a minute uh, to talk? It's important. Okay, folks, uh, just give me a moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's rude. Going away with me here, all by my lonesome. <whistles> At last, you're back. It was dying out there. Sorry. Okay. Now, where, where was it? Oh, yeah. The types of plagiarism. There's, of course, straight up copying from online, of course, as well as having someone write, else write the paper for you. Despicable! In addition, failing to cite someone else's work just so you can claim it as your own thoughts is also another type of plagiarism. It's even possible to plagiarize yourself. Huh? We? How far? Well, the reuse of papers turned in already in another class without a teacher's permission is considered plagiarism. However, unintentional plagiarism is still much more likely. Creating an incomplete citation due to a failure to understand the proper formatting is plagiarism. Uh, poor paraphrasing that will lead to accidental quotation of parts of an argument, that's plagiarism. Even just misattributing information to the wrong source is plagiarism. So how far can I juke it like the hated Sassanok? Well, when in doubt, cite it. But here is a few things that should be cited. Any words or ideas presented in any type of media, whether book, magazine, video, what have you. Information 
gained through some sort of conversation, whether over the phone or in person in an interview, anything someone else has told you that you want to try to cite or that you want to try to use. Anytime you copy exact words or phrases from any source. And four, any charts, pictures, diagrams, images, or audio other and other media that is borrowed. So uh, any diagrams you borrow from someone else should be cited. Now, things that don't have to be cited are your own life experience, thoughts, and observations. I think that's coming from your own brain that is not borrowed from somewhere else. Your own data that you've gone through research. So if you do some chemistry and this is what you find, you don't have to cite that. Uh, your own created audio or visual media, whether it's a video like this or like audio recording or diagram or image, all those are examples of something you created on your own. And common knowledge of all types. So whether this is some historical knowledge or folkloric knowledge, something that everyone probably knows. And of course, generally accepted facts. You don't have to cite the fact that if I drop an apple, it will fall to the ground. They'll be like, oh, that's Newton. Got to repeat Newton. No. So generally accepted facts. What makes knowledge common? The easiest way to, to tell is if you can find at least five sources that don't cite a piece of information, it's probably safe to say it's considered common knowledge. Now, we're not trying to teach you exactly how to cite, at least not in this video. We will in the video with some helpful tips to help you with your citation. One, take notes when reading, especially if you find an impactful statement you'd really like to use. Keep to Arthur Klaus by his words. Like my Uncle Duncan says, the U.S. has enough atom bombs to end the world five times. Three, when you put quotes or put quotations around unique phrases when quoting. And if you need to, you can cut out parts using ellipses, which is all those three dots. So you're cutting out parts of the quote that you don't necessarily need, but be careful you don't remove too much context. Also, you can re-add in context with brackets, often used if, you, if the author is saying he or she, and it's not abundantly clear, who he and she is. But make sure you do not editorialize. Don't be putting new words into the author's mouth that he was never intending. If you keep the things in mind, you should come out raw. As always, check the description for links on more info. Bye. May the door miss your crease on the way out.